Boyd and Starnes in row two, Ratliff and Johnson and Jones at the tail. Lights are out, we're underway. DJ got to get the whole shot down in turns one and two. He'll take the high lane of the 67 Speedway. He'll push there off the exit. It will not harm him, though. He'll head down the back straight with the race lead. Race leader going to go to the X of Daniel Jones on lap number one. Starnes on the move. So the one B is Starnes. Two good friends right here at a Texas. Can go go at a tooth and nail for the top spot down the back straightaway. Into turn number three, on demand on RaceOnTexas.com. Every thrill and spill and every burning turn of every lap of the action, on demand on Race on Texas. And this Jones still out front with the race lead. Daniel Jones out front, feeling good about himself to this point of the race. As they'll hustle off at turn number four. Oh my. Well, it's a it's a bad thing he broke down the back straightaway because he got to knock this skeeter problem down for us over on this side. But uh, any mosquito problem we did have is we'll holler at it. Alpha two headed down the back straightaway with the race lead is Daniel Jones still. DJ marching to the beat of his own drum at this juncture of the race. Sends it back up top, corrals the number one car, but stepped out from underneath him here just momentarily. What are we all doing? What are y'all driving the side by side? I don't understand. The main event, and the ones who don't make it, well, they'll have to try it again on another night if they do not make the main event. So we're back underway here at Texarkana, hustling off into one of your first heat race of this Friday night. It's Daniel Jones, DJ, and Custom Coating and Fabrication heat race number one. Been out front from the drop of the hat in this one. Jones continues to lead Starnes in the turn number three. The three, Robin Boyd sits third right now. The 11B running out the field. With his sights set down the back straightaway, getting ready to wind this one down and moving on to heat race number two for the Hami Stocks. They're in the staging area. Final trip around, the white flag is out. Time off of four, dominating heat race number one to open up the action tonight. Daniel Jones fist pumping is down the cockpit. The outside of the 90 of Green, and he'll take second. He'll take second by half a car length at the flag stand. And a great race for second going on. No longer, though. The 40 throws it into his hip pocket and sets his sights down the back straight on the rear deck lid of the number J3 of Jamie Clayton for the race lead. Clayton, though, out front, marching to the beat of his own drum. If anybody's going to be able to get out here and run down the J3 of Jamie Clayton, it very well may be the Locksburg, Arkansas racer right outside of Nashville. The 40 of Carver, chip, 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 chipping away at the race lead. Boy, he's cutting yards into it. He's not cutting in inches. He's cutting in yards now. As off of four down the boulevard, they come with 50% in and the other half coming. Four in of this eight-lap affair. And here comes Carver for the race lead. Carver for the top spot. Going to hunt him hard down the back straightaway. Will he fire it this time? Yep, he'll fire down on his inside, but won't be able to get the job done this time. It'll work on him. Continue going to go to work. And they set down. Clayton feels a little bit of pressure now. The car a little bit tight. Car was a little tight there off the exit of corner number two. But enough to relegate the 40 or keep it in his hip pocket for now. Off of four. It'll be two more trips around the 67 Speedway in Hobby Stock Heat Race number two. And it's a good one. It's a good one. 
Who's it going to be? Carver smells the tail tank of the J3 of Clayton for the race lead. One and a half laps to go. It'll be one more trip around this quarter mile speed plant tonight here in Texarkana on a beautiful Friday night. Down the boulevard they come. Clayton still holding back the advances of Carver. Carver will stay committed to the outside that time and stalk his tire. Jackson returns one and two. He'll try the low line off the exit of two here at 67 tonight. Down the back straight away in the turn number three. Will he elect to go to the hub? He'll try to roll the middle and find some dig and find some bite. It won't be enough though. Jamie Jimbo Clayton gonna score the victory in J3. Just as soon as the 40 at Carver walked up on the hills of the J3, Clayton turned up the wick. He said, oh, no, 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 no. You know, Heat Anderson, the Wiley veteran, who'll put his foot through the firewall and get us underway. Tonight very well may be the night for 007, but he got a little in there hot and heavy. Shelby Ward had a run there, had to shut her down once she got there to the outside. For third is Kemp on the march now to the inside of the 50 for fourth. Dustin Yacht going to lead lap number one. The driver of the Happy Tails grooming outlaw racing chassis 007 with a hobby shop machine power underneath the hood built like Clint Shirtlift. 007 car looking pretty tough to this point, but it has a little bit of a push there on it, but he'll get it corralled. He'll head off, the head off a four down the boulevard. Strickland having a good run tonight. Tim Strickland the second. Breathing down the neck of the F5 of Amazon, who is now going to work on 007 of Yacht for the race lead. Here comes Skeet. Skeet Amazon. Skeet, good as he once was, good as he ever was. At the young age of 61 years old, down the back straightaway. Skeet stalking the tire tracks to 007 for the top spot here in Texarkana. Heat race number one for the factory stocks. KMO Racing Regional Points up for grabs tonight. And a bobble that time by the 007 opens up the door for the F5 of Amazon to get another run. He'll smell the top spot for just a moment. And Skeet will go a little bit higher this time through turns three and four, trying to dominate off the middle of three and four. Here comes Skeet Amazon for the race lead. Skeet Amazon going to go to the outside that time and try to find some momentum off the exit of corner number two. And here it comes. Here comes Skeet Amazon to the inside for the top spot. Yacht cannot get the 007 cars push corralled and allow the F5 to go by and take away the top spot. Yacht will try to cross underneath into three and four. Yacht and F5 going at it here in Texarkana with two laps to go this time by underneath the flag stand. Skeet Amazon. Smooth as butter, baby. He's on a roll. Alpha 2 down the back straight away. Skeet Amazon going to hold on to the top spot. F5. The former super late model winner. What has he not won in his racing career, folks? Over 250 career wins for the driver out front with the race lead in a new Boston. Final quarter mile trip around the speed plant tonight. In the three and four for the final time. Give him a hand, race fans should be able to hold on from here. AJ, nothing but a number, baby. The F5 of Skeet Amazon gonna come across the stripe. He'll score the victory in heat race number two, heat race number one for the factory stocks. 007 of Yacht will grab second. Started 30, finishes third, but it was a solid performance. He had the top two within his crosshairs for the entirety of that side front row. The lights are out, we are underway. Randy Cox knows that Whitehead's starting on the inside. We got to go, and we got to go now. The young man got the start that he was looking for, and he'll relegate the 36J, and here comes the 92 of Rossum. They say, how you doing there, seven-time Cajun Classic winner? You're doing pretty good. You can't count your chickens. Up <laughs> off a turn number four. Down the boulevard they come, but Cox is going to lead lap number one. As they'll hustle off in the turns one and two, Randy Cox feeling good about himself. Has to call. Here comes Brandon Brown. What can Brown do for you? He'll roll up the fourth now, and he'll try to put some pressure on his good friend and counterpart. My goodness gracious, Justin Whitehead. <laughs> Whitehead walked right through the threshold and pushed up into it. The 92 shows him a little bit of respect. But, hey, give him a shot in the shorts that time. and said he may not like that too much. 
A little hot underneath the collar, the 92 car. The young man, uh, 19 years old of Andrew Rossum. Relegated to third as Whitehead punches the time clock. He goes to work on the tail tank of 45R for the race lead. It's heating up in Texarkana tonight. Whitehead setting his crosshairs, but Rossum not done yet. Rossum down the back straightaway. This is one of our one of the good young racers in this sport, folks, around the Arklatex. Rossum is very, very impressive. The young men right now giving heck to the 36J of Whitehead for the top spot. Here he comes. The $10,000 winner of the King of the Hill a season ago and seven-time Cajun Classic winner punches the time clock. He brought his stamps. He'll send it off the turn number two, but the 92 gets the door slammed shut right in front of his face. The 92 of Rossum got the door slammed on him. And he'll drive it deep off into turns three and four. Driving a little hot underneath the collar maybe is Rossum now. Who's it going to be? A phenomenal heat race and heat race number two tonight for the factory stocks. Cox, a little bit of a mistake that time. A bobble, but no harm, no foul. Down the back straightaway. Tick-tock goes the race clock. Stand of the hourglass is evaporating for the rest of the competition, but Whitehead knows that he's got to go, and he's got to go now. And this is uh, about the juncture of the race when you think that maybe he just could have been toying with them the whole time, and Justin Whitehead has found his niche around the racetrack now. Oh, boy, here he comes. Whitehead going to drive it deep to the inside of the 45R for the race lead. He'll show some respect. Got on the brakes there a little bit. The white flag is out. Can Randy Cox hold off seven times? The winningest driver overall. Doesn't matter if you talk modified, late racing, late models, factory stocks, hobby stocks. Justin Whitehead has more wins than any driver in the state of Texas and Louisiana over the last seven seasons. And he'll roll to the back bumper to the young 18-year-old, but he'll hold him off. How about it, racing? For Randy Cox, your winner in 45R. That's impressive. Look, folks, sometimes you call it like you see it. That's pretty impressive to hold back to seven-time Cajun climate all over the Arklatex in this express chassis number 36J. Brent Tidwell from Harleton, Texas. The 26-year-old in 20. The lights are out. We're underway. They'll hustle off into turns one and two. Here comes John Good Jr. John Good down the back straightaway feeling pretty good. Look out. Oh, boy. Wow. How did Whitehead avoid that? That was pretty impressive. Holy smokes. Six cars, eight laps of distance. They're tight. Neck and neck at the line, we're underway. And that's a beautiful start. Throw a field over the, or throw a blanket over the tire field. They're three wide off the exit. They're three wide for the race lead. Three wide, three off the two, down the back straightaway. What's gonna give race fans? John Good Jr. gonna split the C in the tournament three, and Whitehead gonna thread the needle as well. Oh my. Whitehead gonna thread the needle as well. Walk right to the threshold. It is a hello, goodbye situation as he's waving to him right now as John Good Jr. has the race lead early, but Whitehead lurking. These goons are out lurking tonight as Whitehead going to dispose or try to of 23 Jr., but 23 Jr. holding on tough. Here comes Roy. Uh-oh. Roy got loose there off the exit of corner number four, and the 27 of Robinette had nowhere to go. Robinette gets collected, and he now resurfaces onto the racetrack, but he's going to need a caution to get back into contention in this one. As right now, John Good Jr. looking good here tonight at 67. Perhaps a very overdue. Well, he is very long overdue for a victory. Former Halloween Havoc winner at Billy White's Timberline Speedway. John Good Jr. holding on to the top spot with a little bit of a push there through three and four. Whitehead finds a push himself. Here comes Roy now. Roy, gonna throw his hat back into the ring. Here comes the 35 of Aaron Roy. Rapid Roy, the stock car boy, off the two, down the back straightaway. John Good Jr. driving a flawless race tonight. Randy Cox relegated the advance of the 36J in the heat race. Whitehead going to drive a deep off into the corner again. Side by side for the race lead. But John Good too strong up top. John Good. John Good living up to the last name tonight. He's looking all kinds of good here. And here comes Whitehead. Fires another... Pull it down to the bottom of turn three and four. It'll be two laps to go. Six in, two laps to go. And Rapid Roy has thrown his hat officially into the ring, and he's become a player here in 35. A very costly mistake for 35 that time as he approached turns number one and two. And the three. It'll be the white flag coming out this time by. John Good Jr. driven a flawless race at this point. Only one more quarter mile trip he has yet. Oh, white flag out. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? In the one. Whitehead fires a bullet down to his inside again. John Good Jr. way too strong up top. 
He's got the fan club all in the house tonight. Ready to put on an earthquake here in Texarkana off a four-year winner. Going to go to the 23 junior, John Good Jr. That was a fantastic race. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'll have to say I'm just a fan. Limited modified heat race number two, IMC Southern Sport Mods. And maybe a little bit of slight kiss of contact there from the 99, your post sitter of Durham to the left rear quarter of the 14 junior, Michael King. Michael King gonna lead him off of four with a push developing off of four, but he holds on to it. And he'll lead lap number one, Michael King. Michael King Jr. leads his first heat race here at Texarkana. And here comes Brandon Ball, oh my. Uh oh, look out Brandon. Oh my goodness, he almost saved it folks. Hey, oh, height. The lights are back out. We're underway. He'll lead us to the flag stand with your as your race leader. King with a little bit of a tight race car right now, trying to get that 14 junior car corralled. Could probably go to be loosened up a little bit. And in turn number three, the 51 of Priestley going to put some pressure on him. That car just really, really tight as he'll step it back up top. Good entry that time for the 14 Junior. He'll battle back to the inside for the race lead, and I don't think they made contact. Came very close, but King Junior gonna re-inherit the top position here. And it turns three, and off of turn number four this time by down the boulevard into one they head. Chris Riggs getting the black flag pointed at him and getting a warning. And down the back straightaway, here comes Chuck Priestley. Chuck Priestley was fired up after winning at the makeup race and Ball just drove her deep off into the corner. This might be where we wanna. Michael King bobbles that time. I'm telling you, all eyes right now at the tail and all eyes on the top spot. And a couple sets of eyeballs right now. As Chuck Priestley gonna battle back to the inside of the young 18 year old Michael King Jr. of right for the race lead. They go door to door off of turn number four. Oh my. Michael King Jr. gonna stay committed to the outside. Oh boy. Maybe made a little bit of slight kiss of contact there. Some right side romance on behalf of the 51 of Chuck Priestley. Michael King Jr. going to drive her deep off into the corner. Hold on to it, Mike. In the three. He drove her deep off there into the corner, but able to hold on to her down the boulevard. They come. It's a good race again. <laughs> oh, man. This young man is continuing to impress, ladies and gentlemen. Down the back straightaway, Michael King Jr. trying to wrestle the top spot back away from the 51 of Chuck Priestley. Hold on to it, Michael. Oh. He, my goodness, that's as close as it gets. And it turns one and two. Michael King trying to corral the 14 junior. Doesn't have the best handling race car at this juncture of the race, but he only has one more final trip. He turns three and four. Boy, he's driving that thing deep off there. And final time off of four to the checkered flag for Chuck Priestley, your winner in 51. A solid performance for the young 14 junior of Michael King Jr. I don't know about you race fans, that every time, every time Michael King would drive her deep off into the, the IMCA ranks, outside of the Steve Rubble Ward from Texarkana. Jesse Shipman out of Tatum, Texas in the number 40 car. Chris Carter out of Redfield, Arkansas in the number C5. Good to see Chris back after having some health scares last weekend, I believe. The 01A is none other than Drew Armstrong and the Rage Chassis 01A, your most recent winner here. I got Donnie Powers on the lineup, but I shook hands with Donnie earlier, and I don't believe he had a car here unless he made it out in time. Hustling off in the turns three and four. Dustin Tater Hyde, who saw a top five finish last weekend at Boot Hill with the open motors down the boulevard. They come. Here comes Armstrong. End of one and two. Drew Armstrong going to step into the middle lane of the 67 Speedway. Now down the back straightaway. Drew Armstrong still in the tail tank of the 12 car. The East Texas Honda Regan Mac tools by Bradley number T12. Driving again as the hired gun, the house car driver for the IMCA ranks, Dustin Tater High. Hasn't raced much in his career in IMCA, and he's got the crate power singing a song down the back straight away. Here comes Tater High in the 01A of Armstrong for the race lead. It's a good one. It's another good one brewing here in Texarkana, one of the well accomplished and the most dominant drivers in IMCA modified racing in the country. Down on the inside of Tater High. Tater High up to the challenge right now, down the boulevard into number one. Drew Armstrong has met his match. Your opening night winner won the main event in this car. 
but being driven by IRP guru Jason Ingles. Oh, goodness. And the caution flag waves. Just what you don't like to see. $1,000 victory. The lights are out. We're back away here at Sexarkana. As now Brent Tidwell from Harleton, Texas, who also raced this week with the Red River Modified Tour. The 26-year-old out of Harleton, Texas, holds back the C5 of Carter, who rides fourth. And Drew Armstrong slung her off into the corner that time. He'll continue to sling it off into one. With his sights set down the back straight on the rear deck lid of the T12 of Tater High for the race lead. Jason Ingles picked the good driver to get behind the cockpit of this house car. As the Bay Motorsports in East Texas Holland rigging number 12, Mr. Plummer, Mac Tools by Bradley, number 12, leads them into turns one and two. Tater Hyde has the crate power wound up underneath the hood now, down the back straightaway. Hyde being stalked. He's being hawked again through three and four by the 0 one Here comes Armstrong again for the race lead. A white flag on and out this time. One more quarter mile trip. Here comes Armstrong down to the inside for the race lead. He'll try to throw it down to the inside, put some pressure on Tater Hyde. It will come up short. If you're going to throw it, you better throw it down there in one and two. But he'll try it again. He'll drive her deep off into the corner in the 34. Here comes Armstrong again for the top spot, but he won't get the job done. Dustin Tater Hyde, your winner of heat race number one for the IMC Modifieds. So I had six on the lineup, but we got seven here. Seven cars going eight laps of distance here in International Motor Competition Association heat race number two. Boy, and Troy Shagberg went all the way from the, he took the escalator from the top shelf down to the basement at three wide for the race lead, Keaton Atkinson. We're driving the built right motorsports number 24. He's got the Hoffman chassis He's singing a song up top. We'll go to the outside of the racetrack. He'll smash the throttle and relegate the five back to third of Morris. As Shaber going to work. They'll try to take third spot away from Morris as they roll off in the 3-4. Here comes Atkinson for the race lead. He'll hug the hub and hug it well right there around the skitter tires. Couldn't have slid the Holy Spirit between his right front and the skitter. Down into one. Atkinson putting pressure on the 14 to turn it for the top spot. They're two by two by one. And down the back straight away. You heard him. So the driver, the James Cobb Memorial Award winner a season ago from his performances here at Texarkana down the back straight away. He'll fight tooth and nail. And he, he's gritty, Oaks. A 19-year-old gritty young man. He's going to take the top spot right now and relegate the 14 to second. Please sit down and take a seat as a 19-year-old. Keaton Atkinson digging up top now. He'll be able to set his sights down the back straightaway and drive his own race now as he is dictating where he should or shouldn't go. He'll be able to search the racetrack and get some laps learned on this Hoffman race car. He's hot behind the wheel up for 2019. Scored a victory here in the Dirtworks chassis a season ago here in 2018. The, I've said it several times. I told Timmy Colt last time I talked to him, I said, this kid's going to be pretty good. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he's pretty good. And then, of course, uh, I think uh, Keaton beat him in a heat race uh, later on that evening. It was pretty fun. <laughs> So down the boulevard, they head off into turns one and two. It'll be two more trips around. And just binding his time. You know, patience is a virtue oftentimes for a lot of racers. A lot of, a lot of times guys will put their car on the trailer in one piece. They don't have much patience. They got a fast car. Well, as soon as they get the patience working on their behalf, that's exactly what you're seeing here. Put nearly an entire straightaway since the time he put the 14 of Turner back to second. And Turner's now faded back to third as Troy Sheaberg is up to second now. Final time in the turns three and four, an absolute dominating heat race performance in heat race number two, presented by Custom Coating and Fabrication, your winner. Goes to the Hot Springs Heater, the 24K of Keaton Atkinson, your winner. Yeah. Uh, Solid again, Arkansas, he's in the number four R. Morgan Powell, the young lady out of Texas, Canada, the 21M. Jesse Tate from Hooks, he's been a quick one in the 13J. Keep your eyes on him. Lights are out, we're underway. Two by two by two, all the way to the till. Down the back straightaway. Mitch Durham got a little cattywampus there as he got sidestepped for the race lead as Rambo's got to run into turn three in the red number four R to the outside of the 67 speedway trying to find some momentum. He'll find it. He'll take the top spot away from the 
21G of Paul Garrett. Garrett will fight back, though, tooth and nail off of two down the back straightaway. Garrett going to hold on to the hub of the racetrack down the back stretch as Rambo stretching it out on about a cart length and a half into turn three. Durham sliding up the racetrack up in front of the 36 of Muber now, who rides fourth as Morgan Powell sits fifth as Tate has problems in 13J. Again, on demand on raceontexas.com. Every thrill and every spill of every lap and every class as the caution flag waves for the 13J of Jesse Tate. Saw him starting to limp there at the top of turn. So right now in the four-cylinder heat race number two, it's Dalton Vines out front all about his lonesome to the number D1 car. So four and then four more laps to go. You got the number 58 of Chris Bruce from Hook, Arkansas sitting in second. As Michaela Kennedy going to get one spot up and go to the third spot. And the number 37K, the young lady... Looking good tonight, still getting their feet wet and having a little bit of fun here. But getting progressively faster week in and week out.
Heat race number two spread out all over the all over the racetrack right now as Dalton Vines out front minding his own business in this one. Brandon Starnes to the outside. It's Carver and Jambo from the tail, though, to see if they can come from the tail to win the night. An initial $200 lays in the balance for Jimbo Clayton and Taylor Carver, who start tail. We'll see what happens. It's Clayton has got the jump. They already got three for the price of one. The Walmart special. Carver will take the target special in the three and four, and we got problems. Green around with the 11. All right, well, if y'all continue to go, of Clayton as they start shotgun for an additional 200 if they can win the night. The lights are out. We're underway at Texarkana. Three wide. Clayton goes around the hub of the racetrack. The 40 lurking at his tilt tank. Down the back straight away. Carver still behind him. is leading lap number one though. This time through three and four will be... Oh boy. away at Texarkana. Tyler Green gonna go up the third now. He'll work to the inside of Starnes. will go to the hub of the racetrack that time. Clayton up the fifth. Now they're three wide. Carver. Oh! Carver had nowhere to go. And makes some contact there to the 96 car. My goodness. A lot of high attrition here. So original restart again. The X of Jones out front with a lead. Dexter Jones has a race lead right now. As I'll tell you what, Carver got the start that he has been longing for. And the 40 car went back to the tail. Of course, J3, that's the first time. Oh, my goodness gracious. The three car swings around like a top. Carver breaks this time off the exit of two. So that whole deal... Turn number four, and he will. We're back underway. 90 of green gets a good restart, and... Clayton got to work down on the inside and try to grab the third spot away as they head off the dude. Here comes Carver. Oh, boy. Three for the price of one. Three for the price of one, and come on, fellas. Odie Future going to send him straight to promoter school. He cares about you race fans, I'll tell you that. Send it to promoter school. As he'll keep us under the green flag right now, Carver stalking the J3 of Clayton, who's up the fourth as Carver's the fifth, and he just made a three-car pass at once. That last previous slap off a of two. As they set their sights down the front boulevard, enters the number one. The fly in the ornament could be the 90 of Tyler Green. How far up front will the J3 and the, and the 40 go as Carver is reeled in? J3 now the top five separating themselves from the rest of the field of competition. There's a five-way tango breakaway for the lead right now in 67. Off of four, down the boulevard, they come in to number one. DJ holding on to the race lead still. But for how long? Looking pretty good right now, holding back the advances. 
of the Nania Green. As now here comes Jimbo Clayton. Jimbo will take the limbo, will take the low side of the race, check and walk right underneath the threshold. Or try to, of the one, or does walk by the one of Starnes, and Starnes allows the 40 to go by Carver as well. Carver up to fourth, now J3 to third. Clayton working the back bumper to the Nania Green for second now. He is worked up as high up into this field and, and the caution's out. Here comes Jamie Clayton with a good run on the restart. He'll go to the outside of the Nania Green for second. A little bit of slight kiss of contact of the tail tank of the X for the race lead. Green with a big push that time. Oh boy, about lost the handle. Nania Green about lost the handle. Car stepped out from underneath him and he's able to corral it. The 40 now will go to work on him as he gets loose again as Clayton disposes of him. Finally down the back straightaway. As now Jimbo going to go to work on the X of Jones. Jones out front singing his own song, marching to the beat of his own drum at this juncture. We'll have to see what happens. Should be interesting. As now Carver working the bottom side of the racetrack with the Nani car getting away here off the exit. Does Clayton have what it takes tonight? Jones going to have to drive a flawless race to this point until the checkered flag flies. And they're closing in. Here comes Jimbo Clayton for the race lead. Come up short, the x cars top side momentum works to his advantage down the back straightaway. Jamie Clayton, busier than a sailboat crew working in the tidal wave right now. All before they come down the boulevard. And three wide there is Carver gonna take advantage. And he'll go door-to-door -door for second as the X got a little caddy office there off the exit of the corner and he'll get two or try for the price of one. The X car of Jones now fading to third. And what do you know, race fans, only halfway in the books and right now they run one and two on the racetrack. Can Carver get the job done and get out here and dethrone the J3 of Jamie Clayton tonight? Taylor Carver, the two-time Texas Motor Speedway World Dirt Track Championship winner. And the North North Louisiana State Championship winner of Jimbo Clayton out front with the race lead. One slight bobble will be the difference tonight in, in going to victory lane or not. The 40, stalking the tire tracks into turn number one. It's just a matter of time before he strikes and he'll strike down the inside that time off the exit of corner number two. They go neck and neck down the back straightaway. An additional $200 lays in the balance. It's regular pay, whoever finishes second. Here comes Carter down to the inside for the race lead. He'll slide it down to the inside of the J3. The J3's top side by middle, so works for him. It took a little while to get the race under the green flag, but right now, these dudes right here waging war exactly what we expected to happen. Right now, they're fighting tooth and nail. Who wants it more? A show me what you got. Friday night special in Texarkana. A how bad do you want it kind of Friday night here? As Carver, that time, bobbles there to the center of the corner, washed up the racetrack a little bit, lost some momentum. He'll have to regain it. He'll have to try to get it back underneath in the 40 car. We'll go back to work now. He brought his stamps. He'll send it off the two and in the three with crosshairs shooting for J3. J3 leads off of turn number four. It's getting down to it. Should be seven laps to go if my calculations are correct. Seven to go down the back straight away. Jamie Clayton being ran down again by the 40th Carver. Taylor Carver, the former $5,000 winner of the King of the Hills, got it working around the hub. He couldn't have fit the Holy Spirit right there between the left front. And the, and the skitter tire into turn number one. He'll go to the top shelf again and put that hoodie cackle collision number 40 all over the bumper of the J3 as they approach turn number three. He's got that Keith Craft racing hit power. Keith Craft power underneath the hood of the 40 car. Down the boulevard they come. Two laps to go. So yeah, my calculations were not correct. <laughs> into one. Oh, a Carver just broke. Dang, dag nabbit. As Carver broke, I would love to see how that one was gonna finish. But Jamie Clayton driven a flawless, flawless race tonight. 
The white flag out for Jamie Clayton. This race started off with a few cautions, but guess what? The cream rose to the top as the J3 car will roll through three and four for the final time. The former North Louisiana State Championship winner, your winningest driver since this class began. Hobby stock winner tonight goes to Jimbo, Jamie Clayton and J3. Give him a round of applause, race fans. He's getting ready to climb out of the cockpit of the number J3 car, the Punisher Racing Chassis. Like I said, it had a hard time getting that one going under the green flag, but when it did, him and Carver put on an absolute display. Jimbo, Jamie Clayton, and Victor Lane. I'll let you draw the 50-50 number in just a second, too. Y'all go ahead and get your 50-50 tickets out. Man, what a run. You know, you, we told the race fans what was going down there. Carver, you know, tough tough time getting the race started there, you know, under the green flag. Once it finally did, you guys really waged war out there for the top spot, man. Uh, one little mistake could have been the difference in this one tonight. Oh, yeah. I, I thought he broke something. I seen him off over at working on it. I didn't know he'd come back on there until I seen his nose. And, uh, oh, crap, I better go. <laughs> yeah, he got a flat, I believe, went to the hot pit and was able to make it out in time. But, uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's got to fire you up, man. When you can answer the bell like that, you know, you got all these great race fans cheering, him on, cheering you on out here. You got a lot of fans here at this racetrack. Oh, yeah. Hell, I love it. Hell, I drove the tires, pull them off the car. <laughs> you sure did. <laughs> he, he ain't kidding, folks. He drove the, the right rear right off of it. Yeah, I rolled that one off, I guess, down here on that last lap. I just knew he was going to get by me there because I lost all my traction, but I held it off. Did you have a breath of fresh air whenever you came by and seen him sitting up there? I mean, I know that, you know, you earned it. You, you earned the race win, but uh, yeah, I had to feel a little bit of uh, relief there. Yeah, yeah, I did. But, uh, hell, I had hell running my brother-in-law down there. And I even gave him a little bump there. Hell, I wasn't going to let him have it. No, yeah, I didn't think so. You know, I think he would want it. I think he'd want you to make him earn it, too. Oh, yeah. I got to tell you, he was smiling in there whenever I was bumping him. He had a great car tonight, too. Let's hear about all the folks that help you out in this J3. Uh, so I like to thank my wife as always, Tyler Green Trucking, Livingston Trucking, Matt Ralston Trucking, PNC Fab, Custom Graphics. I guess everybody. What do you have to say to all these folks that want to see the J3 car in Victory Lane tonight? Thank you all for showing up, watching every night. We're glad you all come out. Congratulations to you, Jimbo. We'll get you to draw the 50 50 for us. <laughs> Turn away at Texarkana. The unfortunate contact there for your outside pole sitter it brings up Justin Whitehead now to the deck on the outside front row, and he's going to storm to the race lead to the outside of the speed plant and take the top spot away. So a lot like last week when Austin Smooth Waters and Brown made a little bit of contact up front. The two went pit side, and 36J inherited the race lead this night. Whitehead will inherit the outside front row, and it's going to be tough to run down and beat 36J tonight. As Brandon Brown putting a shot there to the tail tank of the F5 of Amazon for second. Brandon Brown a little bit of a shot in the shorts there. He'll bring Kirby, Arkansas racer Neil Kemp along with him. All before they come down the boulevard into turn number one. Brown flirting with disaster to the inside of F5 for the second position into turn number one. He knows that he's got to go. He's got to go now if he wants to run down his fellow chassis competitor, Justin Whitehead. As the outlaws right now, one, two, three on the speed plan here in Texarkana tonight. Is Whitehead getting away out front in 36J. It has certainly been exciting to see if the young man, as he held off Whitehead in the heat race earlier tonight, is how long Randy Cox could have held on if he could have held back 36J the victory lane tonight. But it'll be all for naught, unfortunately, for the young man out of Blanchard, Louisiana, who had to throw her on the trailer a little too soon. 
As the F5 of Amazon still holds back the club 20 of Neil Kemp, who writes third in front of the 32 of Brandon Brown, Andrew Ross on your top five and 92. Here, Skeet Amundsen may be the quickest car right now on the racetrack. We'll find out. Well, we'll be able to find out if the live timing and scoring was working right now. Unfortunately, it's not, so not able to get that to you. As 36J leads, but F5 chip, chip, chipping away, but the center of the hourglass. He's got a half, he's got 50% more to go to get the job done. Amundsen trying to stalk down 36J of Justin Whitehead for the race lead. As right now, Rossum is in able to get by the 32 of Brandon Brown to go to fourth. And some contact. The 32 and 92 make contact, and the round goes 32 like a top. Brandon Brown to the scenic route. Dukes a hazard style through the infield. And he'll try to resurface, and he may bring out the caution. And look at that. <laughs> oh, boy. Right around here, and he'll try to get off the final few here in the factory stock main event tonight. You get on the throttle a little early, but it'll work. We're back underway. As Amison back in the two hole, into one. Amison will try to see if he has anything. It's the best restart he's had to this point. Will he be able to do something with 36J tonight here at Texarkana? Down the back straightaway as they approach turn number three. Griffin resurfaces on the racetrack in the 17. But off of four, 36J leads F5 down the boulevard into turn number one. Skeet brought himself a Hot rod to Texarkana tonight. And he's trying to dethrone the best factory stock driver in the business. Whitehead's going high, as high on the racetrack as you can go. His entry is down pat. Off of four, down the front stretch, they come again. And tick off another lap into the history books. Amazon had a hard time that time getting through three and four. And lost a little bit, about a half a car length to 36J. As Club 20 now. As, and Kyle Blanton being pressured by the 32 of Brandon Brown, who is back inside of the top five. I'm telling you, the battle for second on back is phenomenal right now. Rossum trying to get up one. He'll throw the slider on the 32 of Brandon Brown. Slide job accomplished. On the nose of the 32 of Brown by the 92 of Rossum. Rossum trying to cross back up in front of the nose of him. Boy, it's about to get hairy back here. It's getting messier than an 80s food fighter, a scene from Animal House. As they head off a two down the back stretch. It's still the F5 holding on to second. Relegating to the club 20 and Neil Kemp. Kemp has not made it up to second in this, in, in this race to this point. But Ben comfortably holding on the third, and Blanton going to work back on him. Kyle Blanton in the TRC racing chassis built by Loney Richardson. As lap traffic up in front of the nose of 36J, he should be able to get by no harm, no foul. 
as Griffin would get disposed of here and put down a lap in the number 17 off of turn number four. Two laps to go for Justin Whitehead. Barring a catastrophe or a, a mechanical setback, I don't believe they'll have anything for 36J tonight because they'll come off a of turn number four to the white flag this time by. The limited modified express chassis sitting in the infield. He's ready to hop out of this cockpit into that one. As 36J doing what 36J does here on a Friday night. As he'll pilot it through three and four for the final time to the checkered flag. Your factory stock main event tonight presented by RaceOnTexas.com. To the checkers, Justin Whitehead wins his ninth event of the 2019 season. So I mentioned race fans that Justin's going to have to run an entire 40 or, you know, back-to-back 20-lap main events. So sure he didn't mind the few cautions in this race, but give it up for him, race fans. Seven-time Cajun Classic winner Justin Whitehead back in victory lane here at the home racetrack. I told the fans, you know, you have a few cautions in that race like that. I'm sure it doesn't, you know, I'm sure you don't mind it too much because if you had to run 40 straight caution-free when you hop out of this one into that one, it'd be pretty taxing on you. Oh, man, we had a real good break. Uh, I don't know what happened there on the back straightaway, but that sure allowed me to get up, you know, pull outside and start positions and everything. What about that heat race earlier tonight, you and Randy Cox? That young man's really growing by leaps and bounds. I'm sure that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? He is. I went and talked to him over at uh, Intermission, and he was super, super nervous. I hate to have that bad luck for him. He really was uh, hopeful. Yeah, you might go over there and give him a shot of encouragement after this limited deal, because he's got to be pretty downtrodden after that, man. Let's hear about all the great folks that help you out if, if you don't make it back here. Uh, Thompson Motorsports, Strength Roofing, uh, Sames Ford, a and Delivery, my wife Sarah, my daughter Kayler. WW Timber, uh, Borderline Septic, Hadaway Towing, Pro One Transmission, uh, and my mom and dad. One final thing. I know you got to hop in the car, but final thing. Next weekend, of course, uh, your big event at uh, Arkle Tex, Factory Stock 50. You excited? Shoot, yeah. I hope that rain goes somewhere, though. Uh, I, I didn't even look at it. I, to, I just take it one week at a time. Congratulations on your win tonight, Justin. Best of luck in the Limited. Thank you. Good up for him, race fans. Justin Whitehead scores the win in your Factory Stocks tonight. His ninth event, ninth win of the 2019 season overall. The 51 of Chuck Priestley, the 27 of Dustin Robinette. They're going to come at a snail's pace to the green flag, and we're underway here at Texarkana. Again, on the man on raceontexas.com. They hustle off into turns one and two. It'll be the number 99. Now Durham jumping out to the early race lead here in the turn number three. In the three and four. Durham washes up the race check a little bit, opens up the door for Aaron Roy. Aaron Roy trying to get back to victory lane here for the first time since 2017. Down the boulevard into the first stretch, they come into one. Aaron Roy trying to get back to victory lane. His brother Adams went to victory lane here several times in the last couple of seasons in the three. The Red Lick Texan on a ball tonight. Here comes Rapid Roy. And here comes Justin Whitehead. Whitehead ripping and rolling the outside of the 67 speedway right now. They go to the road for the race lead. Fantastic race brewing here at 67. As off of turn number four down the boulevard, Aaron Roy working to the back bumper to the 99 for the top spot of Durham. Dur oh, three wide down the boulevard. The 23 of John Good Jr. was the short end of that stick. Oh, my. So they hustle. Here comes Roy again for the race lead. Whitehead's up to fourth. He is rolling. And here comes Michael King Jr. into the mix. I'm telling you right now, folks, could it be this young man's first ever win tonight coming in the limited of five division? As I'm telling you, he's been pushing the progression. And here he comes. Oh my, I might cry if that young man won tonight. Into turn number three. Oh boy, and the caution flag. Oh, look out, Michael. The caution flag will come out on the racetrack here at Texas Canada. And uh, if that first few laps of this one wasn't exciting. So this point of the race, a 99 of Justin Durham. What happened, what happened to Roy? I don't know. 
So the quickest lap in this race has been turned by Dustin Durham, your race leader. I'm sorry, Justin Whitehead with the quickest turn lap with a 17 9 one, two. Back on the restart. Michael King a little loose there off the exit. So one by two by two by one in the number one. A five-way car breakaway for the lead right now. Throw a blanket over the top five. Oh, my. What a race we have brewing in Texarkana tonight. Your sport mods putting on a show as Michael King going to slam it off into turn three and four to the 14 junior to the outside of the 35. They're going at it. Three wide nearly for the race lead. They're three wide for second. Oh, boy. Michael King Jr. into the mix now. They're going three wide here. Continue to do it for second contact there with the B-17 and the 14 Jr. Young man still learning each and every lap, but right now Robinette going to throw his hat into the ring. What a race we have brewing the night here at 67. Oh my. Roy going to take back the top spot off of turn number four. Down the boulevard into one. I mean, it is unbelievable racing right now. Roy takes away the top spot, and Michael King Jr. has another run down to the inside of the disposal of the 99 of, <laughs> of Dustin Durham. And here comes Whitehead. Whitehead at 36J to the outside of the racetrack. Right now they're going at it tooth and nail, door to door off of turn number four. And Michael King Jr. Whitehead. Oh, Michael King Jr. just turned the best lap of the race with a 17.908. Michael King Jr. best lap of the night, a 17.908. Whitehead with a 17.912. So four tenths quicker for Michael King Jr. that last time by off of four. Brandon Ball now the quickest car on the racetrack with a 17.862. Brandon Ball digging. He'll go down to the inside of the 14 JR and try to take the third spot away. Ball the quickest car on the racetrack now at this juncture. The white hit taking over the top spot from 10th. It's halfway in and halfway to go. Unbelievable. A 17.862 for Ball and Ball has the quickest car on the racetrack right now. The last time, last time by. Whitehead with an 18.250 and 18.424 for Aaron Roy and Brandon Ball with a 17.293 or 17.793 rather as the top three breaking away from the 14 junior of Michael King now. As they head down the back straight away in the turn number three. It's heating up at Texarkana. Here comes the B-17 of the freight train from Farmerville, Louisiana. Brandon Ball is digging now, baby. Here he comes. Brandon Ball wants it. He wants it. He'll go down to the inside trying to get his first win of the season on Express Race Car. Shane Hebert forming an alliance in the offseason with Whitehead and 36 Jake and the B-17. And they have been tough. Tough as nails. Off of four. Ball trying to take it away at the line. He will. Half a cast whisker at the line. Oh, my. What a race we have brewing tonight, race fans. If you don't like what you're seeing right now, you don't like dirt track racing very much. As Brandon Ball has rolled his way to the race lead. Priestley trying to work on the 14 Junior of Michael King now. We're working down to it as Brandon Ball driving a flawless, flawless race tonight here at 67 Speedway. In the turn number three they come with lap traffic of semi cops up ahead. Oh, there's the B-17 and 36J. Whitehead will go to the outside. Whitehead trying to find a run to the outside of the racetrack again. He'll diamond off the center of the corner. Down the boulevard they come. Tick-tock goes the race clock. The center of the hourglass ticking away, but here comes Whitehead again, fighting again. Comes up a little bit short. Up Hell of a race brewing the night here at 67 Speedway. Here in Mandeville, Arkansas, Whitehead's got another run off of turn number four. Here he comes. Whitehead has another run, but it will not pay dividends. B-17 holds back the advances. The quickest lap of this race. Awfully indicative. Who has the best hot rod of the bunch? With a 17.715 turn to this one for Brandon Ball, the freight train for Farmville. And he is starting to roll away on lap number 17 being scored this time at the line. 17 laps into the history book. Three more trips around. Two laps to go next time. Ball and they cross underneath the flag stand. As Ball has gotten away. But there's just a little bit of a thin line between love and hate. And you make one bobble and 36J will capitalize on your mistakes. Two laps to go. For the best lap time in this race, Justin Whitehead just turned his best lap of the race the previous lap. For the 17 911. And Whitehead's closing in. Whitehead just turned his best lap of the race. With the white flag coming out this time by, Whitehead just turned his best lap. We'll see what he has this time by at the line. Oh, boy. It'll be between 36J and B-17 to settle the score. A win for Whitehead in the factory tonight. And a second in the limited as he'll come off a four to the final time of the checkered flag. Driving the bubble green to A.B. Lawrence, Express Jackie B-17, the former real freight train back to victory lane.
Well, race fans, if you didn't like what you just saw there, I don't think you like dirt track racing too much. That was a phenomenal display. Your top five drivers out there, I mean, they were waging a war, and it really just got strung out between the top two there at the finish. But, man, it seemed to be anybody's race at any point of that race. Well, this is Brandon Ball's first win of the 2019 season. Brandon's been one of the winningest drivers around the Arklatex for quite some time. He won his first ever race at Chatham Raceway in Chatham, Louisiana. It was a $4,000 victory back in October of 2009. How do I know that? I, I was there, but... <laughs> uh, formerly out of Farmville, Louisiana, just outside of West Monroe, Louisiana. And moved over here to Texarkana three years ago. And in the offseason, formed an alliance with Shane A. Bear out of Scott, Louisiana with Express Race Cars. Tonight turns the best lap of the race with a 17.715 on lap number 11. And set sail from there. Give it up for race fans climbing out of the cockpit. The Farmville Freight Train, Brandon Ball and B-17. Well, man, you finally got you one. I know this has been long coming. Let's face these great race fans. It's been long coming for you, man. I know it. I know it feels good. We can talk about the race in a second, man. I know this feels good. Yeah, it does. I I done got down on myself and, you know, started questioning if I could even win a race again. But I think uh, we finally got everything going the right way, and hopefully it clicks some more off after this. I told the fans a moment ago, lap 11, you turned the best lap of this race of 17.715. It's, uh, it's pretty quick if you look down the rest of the timing and scoring tonight. Man, it seemed like midpoint of the race, you really just set sail. You, your car really liked it around the bottom, man, and you just set sail from there. Yeah, and that was probably whenever I got behind Justin. Uh, you know, he, I know he's so good, but I wouldn't want to race with nobody else just to make myself better because, you know, it just helps you down the long run racing with people like him. How much has, uh, I mean, Justin been a help to your program? You both switching to Shane A. Bears Express race car in the offseason. I've told Shane himself, you know, it's a resurgence for his stuff. You know, Jason, Western Flyer the last couple of years, but he's been really satisfied. And I know this definitely got to propel you going forward, man. You got some big races coming up. Oh, yeah. The car's been good. Just, you know, I've, I've had some real bad luck. Like last week, I, I really didn't even want to drive back in front of all the people. It, my power steering went out, and that sucker hung a hard left into that tire, and it, it was embarrassing. But hey, we got it all put back together, and we're back out. It seems like it's always kind of been something in '67 too. This final thing. I mean, uh, first time to get back in Victor Lane here in quite some time. I'm not sure the last time you've won here. Yeah, it's been a while, but like old, uh, like old Scott Blunkwell said, I think the Gremlins have finally pulled out and they've landed. The aliens have landed. Let's hear about the folks that help you out in the race car real quick. Uh, i like to thank Express Race Cars, Bubba Green Towing, uh, Neil Kemp, BJ Moore, Custom Codings, AB Performance, uh, Best Engines, Team 5. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's all good. Yeah. Superior Graphics, uh, Pro One Transmission, I, I don't want to leave anybody out. Like I said, it's been a while, so I want to thank everybody. I want to thank my wife, Colby, Scooter, everybody back there that helps me, you know, rebuild this thing every week. At least you didn't forget what to do with your hands. <laughs> That's right. Coming up for him, race fans, the Farmerville Freight Train, Brandon Ball, back in Victor Lane here at Texarkana. I'm turning to the 14 alongside Keaton Atkinson from Hot Springs, Arkansas in the 24K. Chris Carter at a Ridgefield, Arkansas racing with a heavy heart tonight. And outside of Chris Carter, the Detroit Shea Burger to Amity, Arkansas. Drew Armstrong from Benton, Arkansas with a 0-1-A as right now they go at a tooth and nail down the back straight to Tater Hine has out front with the race lead. And maybe the caution flag may be coming out, but not sure. It will not. They'll stay up there. They will. The caution flag will wave just as Keaton Agassiz was trying to mount a charge on the 12 of Tater Hine. Tater High, the Nash Flash on the throttle. We're back underway. They'll hustle in. It turns one and two for the first time on the original restart. Atkinson gets another good start. He tries to go three wide. The 50 is Steve Rebel Ward. The five, oh, my goodness. Mike Morris makes contact with the 24 of Keaton. Atkinson, look out, Keaton. Goodness gracious. And the bad luck. Biscuit strikes again. And that's just like why you don't want to see. We're back on our way. Drew 
Drew Armstrong getting a nice start in this one. He's going to already be on the back bumper of the 24 when they exit turn number two. Addison finally gets by the 5M car as we could have left the left front at home, if you will. And he's going to get three wide here off of four. Addison gets contact. Oh, my goodness gracious. There's all kinds of wild right now in this main event for the Open Wheel Modifieds. And, I mean, Agassiz had nowhere to go. I mean, Mike Morris about parked it right in front of him there in the 5M car, and the caution flag comes out. So they're backing away right now. The 0-1 A of Drew Armstrong at a bit in Arkansas. Dispose of the 20 of the Harlton, Texas racer Brent Taylor relegates him to fourth as Armstrong going to work on Carter for second. As they head down the boulevard in the number one, Justin Taylor Hyde. His last lap time is 17-9-3-4. To put, I'm sorry, Drew Armstrong with the best lap time is 17-9-3-4 so far. As his last lap of this race, Taylor Hyde with an 18-0-3-1. So a few tenths quicker is Armstrong, who's working back in third right now. Down the boulevard, they come back into one. Chris Carter. Oh, we got problems. For Hyde on the throttle. We're backing away here at 67. Down the front stretch into turns one and two. Here comes Drew Armstrong. Now the Benton Arkansas racer on the throttle on the mat. Into turns number three and four. One here on two Friday nights ago. And he'll come to the inside for the race lead. Here comes Armstrong at 0 1 one winner with this short car. Driven by Jason Eagles tonight. The higher gun in the Eagles racing performance chassis. Mac Tools by Bradley. Mr. Plummer, number 30, number 12. Down the back straightaway is Dustin Hader High, the higher gun. High, trying to get back an International Motor Competition Association victory lane for the first time in quite some time, if ever. I'm not sure that he has. But like I said a few moments ago during the caution flag, then maybe he had when, when he was with Dakota Motorsports years ago. As off of two down the back straightaway. Tater High trying to find his niche around one of his home racetracks here. He's won many of them since Billy White's Timberlands Speedway opened in 2013. And trying to dominate off the middle lane of corners number three and four is the 0-1-A of Armstrong who's showing smoke. Maybe losing a power plant. Armstrong maybe losing a motor. He did. Armstrong to the Heartbreak Hotel. Drew Armstrong limp at the top of turn number two. The first mechanical failure I've seen him have since he's been racing here at 67. Wow. Turn away here at 67 Speedway. Back to the green with the Top Gun Anthem. Has a 78 car piloting there to the outside. Jason Castleberry from Hot Springs, Arkansas in the 78 car. Got up there, contested for second for just a few moments, but rolled back to third as Carter sits second. We're, again, racing with a heavy heart tonight. As right now, the best lap turn to this race will be by. Dude, that is Chris Carter's turned the quickest lap in this race with a 17 one or 17.793. 17.793 for the Second place driver of Chris Carter, Tater High's last lap time with a 17.887. So smooth right now, as smooth as satin is on a roll. And heading off for turn number two with his sights set on turn number three. It's Dustin Tater High marching to the beat of his own drum, getting away now in car number 12. This will be firing up Jason Ingles to get this phone call tonight if he can hold on and go to victory lane. Halfway in, halfway to go. And a very Interesting addition to the IRP stable. One that I guess is not too big of a surprise is Ingles and Hyde have a nice relationship. But cool to see those guys forming alliances. Jason won on here on night number one. As I mentioned several times this year that Armstrong came up a little bit short. But it started back in the eighth position on that night. He ran out of time to get the job done. 
But interesting to see Ingles, who cannot come over here on every Friday night to allow the 12 car, or to allow Tater High to drive the 12 car here to help his IMC modified program. As Ingles will be in the cockpit of his machine at this year's Race for Hope 71 at Mark Martin's, uh, Mark Martin's big event at Batesville Motor Speedway. We are wanting to see some more competitors come over and give the 01A of Armstrong a run and help build this class around the Arclitex, but it's been kind of tough one. This seems to be the only track around that is elected to run the IMCA modified sanctioning banner. Ah, Caution Flight is out. Lights are back out. Our lights are out. We're backing away. Shea Berg takes the second spot away. They head down the back straight away in the turn number three. Shea Berg got to try to put some sauce on the race lead now as the 12 car still leads. The last lap time for Troy Shea Berg at 18.275 and a 17.925 for Tater Hyde. Tater Hyde getting away again out front. Sheaberg though, much quicker on that last lap. Sheaberg just turned his best lap of the race on lap number 14, as we'll come around this time by the club league, lap number 16. Huh. As Dustin Tater Hyde. Tater still leads in the turns one and two. Tip top goes the race clock. The next time by, there'll be two more trips around the speed plant left. 17 laps are in the books. Two and a half laps to go underneath the midpoint, and he does down the back straightaway. As Sheaberg trying to inch closer and closer here in the waning stages, but he's got to go, and he's got to go now. Two more trips around for Dustin Tater High. Time to turns three and four. He gets the phone call from Jason Ingles, and it only takes him three starts to get into victory lane. Dustin Tater High to Texas Canada 67 Speedway victory lane. For everyone left in the house, if you are headed out, y'all be sure to give him a round of applause when he climbs out here in a moment. It's mean a lot to Dustin. He's uh, he sold his other his TRC open wheel modified. He's won a lot over at Timberline the last couple of years. Won some at Boot Hill and all the area tracks. He won here last July in the Modified Madness main event in his car. But uh, Jason Ingles gave him a call and gave him this opportunity. Climbing out, folks, everyone left in the house, give it up for Dustin Tater Hyde, driving the number 12 car tonight. We'll tell, we'll tell Jason you treat his car just like you do yours. Uh, the, out, the signature kiss on the roof. This thing was really good tonight, man. I know you probably down on your luck the first couple of starts out in this thing. You had an awesome run at Boot Hill last weekend. You carried that momentum in here tonight, man. What a performance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason, you know, he, what a better guy to drive for right now and team up with. And, um, you know, to finally put this IRP in victory lane for him, uh, for him giving me an opportunity because my old pocketbook uh, ain't looking too good right now. So, 
uh, Jason, you know, getting me out here again, and it makes me feel good to pick up a win for him. That's to be awesome, you know, a guy like Jason, a very well accomplished guy, you know, to instill his confidence in you to, you know, because he can't get over here and race on most Friday nights to get this IRP, you know, uh, IMCA program underway. He's running the big Race for Hope 71 deal over at Batesville, and uh, I know he wanted a good shoe behind the wheel of his race car, and I don't think any, any anybody better to give a call to. I appreciate you saying that. I, 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 I don't think of myself a very good race car driver. I got, I got lucky and uh, been doing a lot of years and uh, uh, just got a lot of people. You know, Daniel, he, he helping me tonight and, and Kenny and Ralph uh, and my wife's here tonight. I think she's my good luck charm and, and my baby girls are here tonight. So, and my mom and dad back home watching. It's just, uh, it's pretty special. To, uh, it's hard to win these things yes. now. So when I win one, I'm kind of excited. Well, you know, and I and take nothing away from Drew Armstrong, but I, I'm, was it a sigh, maybe a little bit of relief? I know you'd like to earn it and race hard with Drew, but when you saw him up there, top of turn two, you know, uh, you know, broke over there. I'm sure you didn't want to see that for him, but man, did you get a little sigh of relief? Uh, you know, he he's like uh, Chris Hennigan over here. He's, he's tough, you know, and, and Drew runs all over the country, and I knew he had a lot of laps this week. He's been racing all week, and I hate the misfortune because I'd like to put on a show for you fans, but uh, I know me and him will be able to race hard together again, and, and my hat's off to him. He's a heck of a racer. I wasn't sure, Tater, if you've won an IMCA race in your career. I, I said it maybe back to the K-9 days with the Cody Motorsports, but uh, have you won an IMCA race in your career? It's first one. First one comes tonight. Anybody in addition you want to thank, man? Oh, just uh, IRP race cars and every sponsor he's got on here, uh, uh, Team 5, and uh, he's got Mag Tools, and he's got a bunch of sponsors on here. But Jason Ingles knows how much I appreciate him and my family for their support. Sure proud of you, man. Congratulations. Thank you, Zach. Give it up for him, race fans. Dustin Taterhide and Victor Lane. Driving the Crate Power, Day Motorsports, East Texas, and Holland Rigging. Mac Tools by Bradley, Mr. Plumber, number 12 tonight with TSK Design supplying the wrap for 2019. Four-cylinder main event underway here at 67 Speedway. And Danny Rambo out of Texarkana earned the pole in the 4R. Dalton Vines out of D1 out of Texarkana, who sits second here on the opening lap into turns number three. Paul Garrett in the 21 G car with Chris Bruce in the number 58. Nick Curl top in car number 34 as they're going at it right now for the fifth spot down the back straightaway they head. Michaela Kennedy. And then number 37. And right now the battle for the race leads heating up. The D1 of Dalton Vines has the 4R of Rambo within cro with his within striking distance in his crosshairs as they come off of four. The final race of the night here at Texarkana 67 Speedway. As they head down the front boulevard, back into turn number one. As now getting pressure for the second position. Headed down the back stretch into turn number three. The D1 of Vines being breathed down his neck by the number 36 of Connor Muber for second. As they head down the front stretch again into turn number one. Watch Mubert, he's gonna cross the lane and go underneath. The D1 lost a lot of momentum trying to shave the speed from the 36 when he went up to take his line, and it hurt the D1 more than it helped him as Connor Mubert rolling like a big dog down to his inside will take second. Connor Mubert won our makeup feature event from April the 12th, but unfortunately suffered a rare disqualification in the second race. He would have swept the entirety of the race night. Look at this, the three wide back here for fourth. Oh boy, the D1 tried to slam I'm sorry, the 36th of Newman tried to slam the door shut on Dalton Vines. Vines tried to slam the door shut on him. And look at this. Justin Converse coming through like gangbusters. Should be getting into halfway this time. Halfway into the history books, I believe. Half, the other half to come yet. Muburn has something. Connor Muburn will set his sights on the 4R of Danny Rambo, the reigning Spooky 30 winner. Chris Frank's event held at Billy White's Timberline Speedway last October. Into turn number three, lap traffic impeding the progress just ever so slightly for your race leader, Rambo, as he rolls off a four with a race lead. As 36 getting closer and closer, 
And he's chip, 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 chipping away at the race lead. Here comes Connor Muburn, using the lessons learned from his father, Brian Muburn. Well, I'm not sure how much he's learned from Brian to race a four-cylinder. Kid just may just get it pretty honest. Into three. Here he comes. 36, reeling him in. It's just a matter of time before he starts knocking on the back door. Michaela Kennedy, the next car, will be a victim to go a lap down. Oh, my. And four of Rambo tries to get by on skates. Now the 36 will go to the outside of the 37K. And Michaela Kennedy put her down a lap. One limp at the exit of turn number on the entry to turn three, but getting off the racetrack slowly. The 58 of Chris Bruce. So as they hustle, back off into turns one and two. Your four-cylinder main event, it's a good one tonight. Always tell race fans, they don't want to go anywhere because you never know what's going to happen. As the checkers have yet to fall officially to end this race night. But the final race of the night, it's a good one. The 36 of Connor Muburn rolling to the back bumper to the number four off of the race lead. Here comes Connor Muburn now. The crosshairs are down, the sights are set, and he'll try to fire a bullet. Missed his target that time. He'll set it down the back straightaway again with his sight set. He'll keep firing until he gets it. He'll fire it down to the inside again for the race lead. Connor Muburn using all kinds of car control. The car looking good underneath the young man of the 36 car tonight. Down the boulevard, they head off into one again. The, the sand of the hourglass starting to evaporate. Tick tock goes the race clock. Muburn and 4R of Rambo gonna settle the score between themselves with no lap cars up ahead. It'll be between these two to settle the score tonight. And Muburn will drive it back down to his inside for the race lead this time through three and four. It will be, oh, come on, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh my goodness. <sighs> <laughs> Connor Muburn. And this is a much better start, it appears, now on this one. Off of four, they're underway and on the throttle. Muburn timed it perfectly. As they head down the front boulevard, back into turns number one and two, it'll be one and a half laps to go when they meet the midpoint of the back straightaway, Rambo. As now Muburn going to get pressure. I'm, I'm not 100% sure of the number on that car. It's like it's been hand-painted. Oh, my. He just drove it deep off into the corner. He's going to lay it. Oh, they say eight tires is better than four, but he didn't even use eight of them. He got a shot in the shorts, though, with the white. Oh, it's two to go. Now it's two laps to go. So Connor Muburn relegated back to third now as Settled between the black car with the chalk paint or chalk numbers. Oh my, D1, just come on, man. Get out of the back stretch. Get out of the back stretch. <laughs> and final time through turns three and four. Driving it down to his inside of Rambo for the race lead. They're going to drag race to the line. Could it be a photo finish? It will not be the deep four arm. Danny Rambo holds him off and he scores the dub tonight. All righty, race fans, you can let go of your breath. And <laughs> I want to thank each and every one of you diehard and great race fans for hanging out to the final whistle. And we thank each and every one of you folks who are already headed to your cars for supporting six, uh, Texarkana 67 Speedway. On behalf of promoter Chris Green, the Gardner family, judge your execution tonight, Mr. Joe Holden in the flag stand. On behalf of all the great racers here at the racetrack, uh, that's Chris Kirsten. How about that, huh? I couldn't see the roof of the race car. Didn't have him on the roster, so... Again, thank all of you great fan, great race fans. We'll thank Valerie Wells behind the lens for Race on Texas tonight. I'm Zach Clark with RaceOnTexas.com. It's always a pleasure. Everybody be blessed and be a blessing. We'll see you here next time. What are we having a uh, powwow out here? Well, race fans, everyone left in the house tonight. Let's give him a hand to Danny Rambo, your reigning Spooky 30 winner at Timberline. That was a pretty wild race. I mean, you, you guys finally slowed down down there in three and four. Uh, you know, you're the leader. You get to dictate how you want to start or not start the race, but uh, it got a little wild there towards the end. Oh, yeah, man. Team, team A come next to me, seen Dalton Vines. I was like, there ain't no way. But 
Connor Mubin was running you down there, and uh, I think he ended up fading third. Kirsten had had a car coming on there late, but uh, you, know, you and the young man raced pretty hard there for quite a few laps. Oh, yeah, yeah. I seen him back there and heard him, too. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Uh, I, I didn't know what was going on out here. Look like the TK Outlaws is going to start a fight out here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm, I, it's, I'm joking. But hey, it's uh, it's good to know you, all your supporters, you know everybody down here. Congratulate on, a, congratulate you on a win. Anybody in addition you want to thank? Uh, my teammates, Team K Outlaws, everybody else that's helped me. Where you been? You haven't been racing a whole lot this year. No, I've been busy with other stuff. I understand. It's always good to have you when you are. Congratulations on your win tonight, Danny. Thank you, Danny Rambo with the four R. Your winner tonight. Your fourth cylinder main event, final race of the night. Yeah, thanks you, thanks all you great race fans for coming out supporting the racetrack here on behalf of Chris Green Promoter, all the concession stand workers, ticket booth workers. Everyone else, Flagman, Joe Hone, everybody, please be safe, headed home, be blessed, and be a blessing to someone. See ya.